The Innovation Theater at CSEMP Edge 24 is sponsored by GAINS. Move forward faster. Sensor-less monitoring. Cargo insights, no sensors required. I'm Arnab, and with me in the audience today is Misaki Mito. We are both from Hitachi's Research Center in Santa Clara, California. There are times when we think inside the box, and then there are times when we think outside the box. But today, we'll think about the box. About the box? Well, the box is this box, the shipping container. It carries the world's cargo. It has revolutionized how global trade happens. It has made trade far more economical. Before these containers, as you can see in the picture, cargo used to be just piled on top of ships. And you can imagine what a mess that would have been. It's a lot more efficient now. And yet, about 5 to 10% of cargo is damaged in transit. Rice, lentils, coffee, tobacco, pistachios, anything that's in a bag, machinery, canned goods. And when you think about global trade, the amount of damage is truly enormous, even if 5 to 10% may not sound like much. Why is cargo damaged? Well, first, the length of the transport chain. A shipment can easily take a few months to go from one side of the globe to another side of the globe. And second is the lack of visibility into these opaque shipping containers during the journey. As to how cargo is damaged, there are three important causes. Number one is water. Water which gives us life and is ubiquitous is also responsible for a majority of the damage that happens. Second, temperature. I'm sure you have seen people working on the cold chain here. That's all about temperature. And the third is shock. We'll be presenting an innovation here that's about water and temperature. These are examples of water-based damage. What you see on the top left is a picture of what we call container rain or container sweat. Second, you can see specks of rust on metallic parts. Third, you can see mold on medicine balls. I never quite figured why they call these medicine balls. It's exercise equipment. But mold grows on everything. Fourth, at the bottom, we see examples of water-laden wood. Wood typically has a moisture content of about 12%. Here it's close to 21. And the final picture shows mold on bags of milk powder. Milk powder is something that we consume, that we give to our babies. Having even a small amount of mold on it is totally unacceptable. So when this happens, an entire cargo load of milk powder is discarded. The way we track damage today, and this is very important to those concerned with the brand, is we send someone, a technician, to install sensors inside shipping containers. They put these sensors in strategic locations, sometimes on the cargo, sometimes on the inside of the container. And throughout its journey, it measures temperature and relative humidity and a few other things. This data is stored. Sometimes we look at it real time if it's communicated wirelessly. The data is then processed. And from that processed data, we derive insights. Our ultimate goal is to get ahead of the damage, to prevent the damage as much as possible. There are a couple of challenges with sensor-based monitoring. The first is the logistics of installing and removing sensors. Bear in mind that you may have installed the sensors in the United States, but they have to be taken off in another country sometimes. In fact, often. 
that's a logistics challenge. Second, the hardware is prone to failure. And third, the hardware and the telecommunication, it's costly. All of these lead to our key innovation. We can track the condition of cargo without sensors. This could be a game changer. Sensor-less monitoring, as we call it, is a machine learning model. It predicts a shipping container's internal conditions from weather data outside the container. If you think of that container as a closed chamber, if we know the weather outside that chamber, and if we can model the thermodynamics well enough, we can estimate the conditions inside that chamber quite well. It's been trained on three million data points obtained by our partner RVM, collected over years from all over the globe. And then we have used that data in a supervised machine learning model. We have tried regression, regular regression, neural networks, and local kernel regression, the model that worked best, to train a sensorless machine learning model. It's a type of AI model, if you will, which once we have the model can use weather data to figure out what's going on inside containers that don't have sensors. We presented a poster in CSCMP ARS today. And last year, we published a paper in the IEEE Big Data Conference talking about the challenges and how we surmounted them. We welcome you to our booth, 3 to 7, where we have live demonstrations of this running. One of the first questions that arises is how accurate is this model? Can it really replace sensors? Well, the short answer is it's pretty good for many applications. It's not as accurate as the most expensive sensors, but it can give you temperature within a two to three degree accuracy on average, and it can give you relative humidity with a seven to eight percent accuracy on average with our best models. Now bear in mind that this will not work for reefers because they have air conditioning inside. And it will also not work in general if there's a heat or water source or sink inside the container. For example, if someone decides to pack buckets of water in a container, I can't imagine why someone would do that, but that water would evaporate and that's something that uh, we cannot account for. Uh, at least unless someone tells us that there's water inside in a different form. But otherwise it works. This technology can build on top of track and trace. Track and trace is the first solution that came about in the space of monitoring. If you have a container or a package, the first question you want answered is, where is my package? When is it going to arrive? And track and trace answers that. Our solution builds on top of track and trace. It fetches the weather data from that location, processes it using our model, and voila, you know the internal conditions, the conditions that your cargo is traveling under. I'll show you a quick demonstration of sensorless technology in action. The technology enables four distinct kinds of solutions. One is an API that you can use to get the conditions of your cargo anywhere on its journey. Two, a shipment planning tool, which you can use to plan for your shipment arbitrarily in advance, months, years, decades, no problem. We have the data. It uses historical data going back all the way to 1940. So that's pretty amazing. The third is live condition tracking, which tracks your shipments live. And the fourth is a quality risk consulting, which involves real domain experts and data scientists to track what's happening to cargo. Let's look at the sensorless API. If you can tell us the start and destination of your journey, we can plot a route find locations along the route and use that in conjunction with our software to tell you the condition of cargo on that route. The users, beyond the obvious, this can enable new kinds of academic research which has been held back by the lack of sensor data. Not anymore. 
At the end of this talk, I'll be giving away a few of these business cards with which you can create an account to test our free API. And if you use that little code on the bottom left, A-U-U-V-A-N in this example, don't use that code, it's been already used. But if you use that to create your account, you'll get a $10 Starbucks card in your mail. Here's what happens when you go to our website. You click on the link that says sign up for API trial. It takes you, takes you to this page. All it wants is your name and your email address. You create a password and you're set. Once you log in, it takes you to, to a page that looks like this. And there's an API tutorial there that you can use to figure out whatever you want about your cargo's condition. Moving on, so, so the API tutorial page shows you an example of how to track a particular shipment from Brazil to the United States. Moving on to the second application, a sensorless shipment planning tool. This is a pictorial representation of what would happen. The gentleman here ships pistachios from Mumbai to LA. And in the past, he has had problems with mold. The lady, presumably from our team, she says, OK, let's look at this shipment hypothetically. We enter specifics of the journey using an AI. It's a simple, uh, sorry, using an EU, a UI, a user interface. It's a relatively simple user interface. Just enter the start and the end of your journey and a rough date when the shipment travels. Select countermeasures if you want to. For example, desiccant to keep the cargo dry. The whole thing gets simulated using data and, and our software. The data looks up shipment routes from a history of shipment routes that goes back several years. It plots a histogram of damage, which is a probability distribution of damage. It shows you the chance that your cargo will be fine. And it also plots the same histogram with the countermeasures, the desiccants. So you can do all this analysis from your desk. What happens when you run this is you get the conclusion months before you've even started shipping things. So in other words, this lady says, yeah, this is a high risk route, we can see that. But if you use 10 kilo of desiccant per container, the risk of damage goes down to 0.1%, which is low enough. And that's a fantastic innovation on top of what is possible today. Now here's a video showing how this tool would work. And you can come to our booth, we'll show you the software in, in real time. The start of the journey is San Francisco and the destination New York in this example. The date is chosen to be sometime in June, I believe, if I remember correctly. Yes. You select a certain amount of countermeasure and let the simulation run. At first, it finds the routes. The routes appear almost immediately. Then it runs a Monte Carlo simulation that's based on terabytes and terabytes of data. The data going back to 1940 is roughly 18 terabytes. And we had to design a custom backend to run this fast enough. At the end of it, it plots the histogram showing the chance of damage. I'll skip the next example in the interest of time. It's from a different starting point to a different ending point, but does the same thing. What I showed you was a domestic on land shipment. The second example was for a sea shipment. It can cover both land and sea. The technology works just the same way. The strengths of the technology are twofold. One is extremely low cost. It uses weather data, which is free. There is cost of the backend, running it, maintaining it, but it is peanuts compared to the cost of installing, removing sensors, maintaining them, the telecommunication over sea, et cetera. 
And second is an extremely high convenience. No sensor installation or removal required, and it avoids the challenge of multimodal wireless communication. Limitations, weather cannot tell you shocks. It can only tell you about temperature and humidity. Second, it does not work for refrigerated containers, as I mentioned before. And third, it's less accurate than the most expensive sensors. Finally, I have a demonstration of the sensorless API, if there is interest. I have five minutes, but uh, you can always get it in the tutorial that's online. If there are any questions, I'd be happy to take the questions first. Otherwise, we can run through the API. So this is how an engineer would explain how this works. You go, to, go into your account. We give you 100 free credits to play around with it. Click on the API tutorial. It will take you to this page, which walks you through a hypothetical journey from Rio to New York. It has all the time and location information that you need for the API inputs. Just copy these, go into your account, copy the API key, click on API reference. It allows you to try out the API. Of course, someone who is an engineer familiar with APIs can use the API in many different ways, including inside computer code. On our website, you can go here, click to use the API key to unlock the application. Type or paste in your API key. I would recommend pasting. If you've seen API keys, typing them in is a lot of fun. <laughs> then complete the authorization. Click to get back on the page. Click here to open. It says temperature, humidity. And click on try it out. On this page, enter the information that you got from the experimental page. It's a, a little tedious, but it will take you five minutes stops. Once you've entered all the location and time information, the API tells you the temperature and relative humidity inside this imaginary container going from Brazil to New York. Click to copy the result, and you can use it for whatever application you're using. So this is the output if you plot it. The temperature, it's around 300, uh, sorry, around 300 Kelvin, and the relative humidity is between 60 and 70 percent, which seems perfectly reasonable for a container on that journey. Here's information on how you can contact us. If you scan that uh, uh, QR code, it'll take you to our website. If you call us, we'd be happy to answer your questions or you can come to our booth, booth 327. That's three followed by three times nine. And uh, we'd love to talk to you more about this. Thank you everyone for your, for your time. Uh, it's been a pleasure talking to you today.